Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be subject to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is your brother, Hawiyala. I want to give all glory and praises to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, grace and mercy be abound to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth that are waiting on the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Uh, today, we're discussing a topic uh, concerning uh, the relationship between um, a husband and a wife. And um, basically, if, as we have read right here, uh, the relationship between a husband and a wife is likened unto the relationship between Mashiach and the church. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look into what the man is expected to do within a marriage and what the woman is expected to do within a marriage. And so um, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and start off with that first verse in verse 22. It says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Okay, so. A woman is to submit herself to her husband, okay? In fact, as we go to verse 24, it says, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything, okay? So there should be submitting, okay, to their own husbands in everything, okay? Just like the church is submit to Mashiach in everything, okay? Now, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to go ahead and look at the word there for submit. There also, submit and subject are the same words in the blue letter. So, that word there is a strong G5293, which is hupatasso. And we're going to see what it says. As you see, the usage in the King James, it says to put under, to be subject unto, be subject to, submit oneself to be su in subjection unto, to put in subjection under, okay? Now it says here, to arrange under, to subordinate, all right? A subordinate is someone who is under somebody's authority. To subject, to put in subjection, to subject oneself, obey, okay? So a woman is to obey her husband in everything, to submit one's control, okay? So basically when a woman is subject or submits to her own husband, she is submitting herself under the control of her husband. To yield to one's admonition or advice, yes. A wife is to yield herself to his admonition or advice, meaning that he is going to correct her, he's going to warn her, and he's going to advise her. Okay, that is the same way that Mashiach is with the church. We don't go about uh, going to him to advise him. Okay, we can we petition, we can pray and petition as as him being um, you know intercessor between Yahweh and man. But we are the ones who are receiving his advice through the words, through red letter. Through the scriptures, as you know, he's known as the word of God. So that's where we receive our advice and our admonition. Okay. So in the same way, a woman has to respond uh, to her husband in the same way. It says also to obey, to be subject. All right. So we see that that word, hupatasso, is referring to how a woman is to be towards her husband. Okay. So we see here. As we go down, we'll go ahead and go to verse 25 for husbands. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So we know that the Messiah, 
Okay, Yahweh Shai laid down his life, all right, for the church. This is a love that a man should have for his wife. It's that same type of love, okay? So we're referring to what is something that a man is capable of doing, all right, for his wife. The same thing that Yahweh Shai did for the church, which is he gave himself for it. And this is something that as any brother would have to understand what love really is okay so that word therefore love is a very strong word okay which is the strong g25 agapeo you've probably heard people say agape okay and that word there it says uh love 135 times beloved okay so this word is frequently used okay throughout the New Testament and it's a very strong word when you go through its usage that this is a high level emotion the type that one would have that would make them lay down their life same way in this a man ought to love his wife the same way and it says here in the outline of the biblical usage of persons to welcome to entertain to be fond of to love dearly of things to be well pleased to be contended at or with a thing, okay? So to love dearly, to lay down his life, that is a deep expression or the highest expression of love, okay? Now, let's go ahead and go back. So just again, to reiterate, husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and go to Colossians 3 and 18. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Okay, now that word there again for submit is hupatasso, the same one we read before, that a woman should submit herself to her own husband. Now, what we're noticing is that there's a pattern. A man doesn't submit himself to his wife. Okay, because guess what? Mashiach does not submit himself to the church. A woman is to submit herself to her husband in everything, okay? And this is something that sisters also have to understand if they're planning on being married. If you're not ready to be subject, to submit, to obey your husband in everything, then you'll probably have to reconsider whether or not you're ready for marriage. And likewise with a man, if you're not ready to love or you don't have the type of love for the woman that you would want to be your wife, in which you would be willing to go as far as laying down your life, if the time came for you to put yourself on the line, then you might have to reconsider being a husband. Okay, so verse 19, husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. And that same word for love is the same word agapeo okay which is to dearly love to truly love as we've seen that word for agapeo was used 135 times one of the most frequent words that are used in the new testament is agapeo all right the strong g25 now let's go ahead and go on to the book of titus this is titus chapter 2 and verse 3 the aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the younger woman to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Okay, so now we'll, let's see whether or not this word is agapeo. Okay, because remember, agapeo is the word, the emotion that's described the way that Mashiach loved the church and gave his life for it. In addition, the same thing that said with the husband and how he ought to love his wife, all right? So this word love for to love their husbands, okay, remember that, for young women to be sober, to love their husbands. Let's go ahead and see what that word is. Now that word there is a strong G, 5362, which is philandros, okay? Now, as you're going to see here, I'm going to go ahead and put, point it out, the biblical using of loving her husband, okay? And it says here, love their husbands. 
And it says, Philandros, to be fond of men, affectionate as a wife. Okay, to be affectionate. Now, this is the only time this word is actually used, as you see in the outline of uh, biblical usage. It's just used in Titus 2 and 4. So what we're seeing here is that even though it says that a woman ought to be, love their husbands, the word there is not agape. Okay? Agapeo is, is a very um, strong word uh, that's being used. And if you look at the outline of the biblical usage in the New Testament, you'll see how strong it is because it refers to the love that a true believer has uh, for the Most High and His Son. It refers to the true to the type of love that Yahushua had for the brethren, for the people that he died for. It's also used as the type of love that one should have if they're a true believer okay it goes into those type of uh things where one would lay down their life for someone or something such as a belief okay so it's a very strong word however philandros is not that strong of an emotion and what we're going to do for that sake to prove that we're going to look at the compound word of philandros all right so it is the root word of two different words all right now um we'll go into this one first right so that word there is philos which is a strong g5384 and when we go into the word for philos you're going to notice that the word love is not even used even to describe that particular feeling it says friend now the word philos is friend nine times so if a woman is philandros we have to understand that the root word of phil is going to be to be friendly all right it says here to be friendly to one to wish him well so a woman is not required to have agape love for her man she's arrived required to basically have philandros okay which we'll get into the other uh part of the compound word so it says here to be friendly to one to wish him well you as a woman should want the best for your husband meaning you should wish you should wish him well meaning you should desire him to have good health you should desire to him to be successful in his endeavors you should desire for him to be able to be safe and to make it home back safely when he goes back to work or and comes back you should also be treating him friendly as well all right so basically showing a level of affection towards him all right so it says here again um a friend and associate he who associates familiarity with one so you got to become familiar with him with him you got to become his companion okay and that's what it means when you go into this um, the Strong's definition, it says, properly dear, i.e., a friend actively fond, to be friendly, okay? To be friendly towards your husband. If you notice, the word love does not pop up. Now, that doesn't mean a woman that has a husband that she's being friendly towards it doesn't mean that she doesn't have a, a strong emotion towards her husband, but to expect it to be, according to what we've read so far, a gapeo type of love, uh, that would not be the case, as we see in the scriptures. And that's okay. Understand this as a man. You are a vessel of great love as a man. And that's how the Most High made you. Okay? And you can't be, um, you know, you can't be upset about that, that... A woman is made differently it's all about reciprocity and that's how the most high made uh both sides to basically you know be towards each other and that's okay because the kind of submission that a woman has to have towards you is what's required in the scriptures as it says that the church has to have towards mashiach all right so let's go ahead and go back to the compound word so that way just for the sake of truth that we understand the philandros what is the other side of philandros so the other side okay is an air 
okay? And as you see, they also have a primary root word, which says man, but we'll go ahead and go down and just see what it means. And it says, uh, with reference to sex of a husband, of a male, of a husband, or betrothed or future husband, okay, with reference to age, uh, to distinguish an adult man from a boy, any male used generically of a group of both men and women. And so basically it just means to be fond of her husband, okay? So to be fond of, okay, philo, to be fond of her husband, okay? To be a companion, to be friendly towards. All right, so let's go ahead and go back just to that Titus uh, 2 and 4 again. When we read that, it says that they may teach the young woman to be sober, to love their husbands. So we got a good understanding of that, that this is not a agapeo and what a man provides towards his wife is not the same as to what a woman provides towards her husband. All right. So that right there um, should kind of balance out everything that brothers have been wondering uh, concerning, you know, how a woman loves and how a man loves. And we know that uh, through these scriptures uh, that we see that there's an authoritative uh, protective type of love that a man has for his wife. And there's a submissive type of love, which we're using the term love loosely because the term we're using in this case with a woman towards her husband is philandros, which is to be friendly towards. Okay. And so, and that's something that a woman has to show and exhibit, um, in her dealings with her husband. Uh, and as she is obeying and submitting to him. So let's go ahead and go on to Ephesians. So we're going to go, this is back at Ephesians chapter five. We'll go, let's go down all the way at the bottom of verse 33. So it says, nevertheless, let every one of you in particular, so love his wife, even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. We see that when we look at the church, the love that Mashiach has for the church is great. When we look at that, we have to ask ourselves going back to up to this. Okay. The subjection. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Mashiach or Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. And we know that Mashiach is not, sub is not subject to uh, the church. He's definitely not. Okay, now, verse 25, husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So that means that a woman cannot love her husband the same way that Mashiach loves the church. That type of thinking is actually incorrect and that is not scripturally sound. So don't expect or even think um, that you that your woman will quote unquote love you the same way as if as the same way that Mashiach loved the church. Okay? So it's there's authoritative and there's submissive action that is going on between the two sides, whether we're talking about the Mashiach and the church or husband and the wife. All right. So now as we go on and it says, and the, the wife see that she reverence her husband. Okay. Now let's see this same reverence uh, that a wife would have for a husband is the same reverence that the church will have for Mashiach. So let's go into look into that word for reverence. Now that word there for reverence, is phobeo, which the word you're familiar with is the word phobia. So basically, Paul wrote in Ephesians 5 and 33 that a woman ought to have phobia for her husband. Okay? Now, we're going to go ahead and read this. Look at the usage. 62 times, fear. 23 times, afraid. 5 times, be afraid of. One time of reverence. It says to put to flight by terrifying, to put to flight, to flee, to fear, to be afraid of. So yeah, a wife ought to have a healthy fear of her husband. 
That's no difference in the church having a healthy, healthy fear of Mashiach. Why? Because guess what? Mashiach is going to judge the living and the dead. So we have to, as a body, as a church, we have to have a healthy fear of Mashiach. And guess what? A woman ought to have a healthy fear and reverence for her husband. Okay, and I said healthy for a reason. But you know, growing up as a kid, you know how it felt like if you did something wrong and daddy was coming home. You knew you had to do things a certain way. And guess what? That's a healthy type of fear in a household that a child should have for towards their authority figure that they're subject unto, right? Just like if you go to work, you got to do things a certain way out of fear, reverence, that that supervisor or manager that you're subject unto would be displeased with you. Okay? So when you go here, we'll go ahead and um, just read it for truth's sake, the rest of these parts. It says to be struck with fear, to be seized with alarm of those startled by strange sights or occurrences or of those struck with amazement to fear be afraid of to fear okay i.e to hesitate okay hey am I, we make sure i'm doing the right thing that's how a wife should be moving in fear and reverence of wanting to do the right things by her husband this is a man that i need to fear he has authority and power over me this is a healthy thing okay this is, a, this is what makes a woman who feels this way about you and is philandros, fond of you, friendly towards you. She's also going to have a reverence towards you as well. All right. She's not going to be challenging your authority. She's not going to be talking back. We can't. The church can't talk back to Mashiach. The church can't curse him out and disrespect him. Neither should a wife do that to her husband. To reverence, venerate, to treat with deference or reverential obedience. Okay? Go down to Strong's definition. To be alarmed, to be in awe, to revere, afraid, fear. Now, for the sake of truth, we know that the word there is phobeo. Okay? We know that we heard about the word phobia, which goes back to the word, what we know in English is fear. Let's go ahead and go into this word for reverence. Okay. So we're going to look at the item online concerning the word reverence. It says here, honor, respect, deference, esteemed, heightened by awe. Respect, awe. It's to stand in awe of respect, honor, fear, to be afraid of, to stand in awe of of fear, respect. Okay? It says reverence is nearly equivalent to veneration, but expresses something less of the same emotion. It differs from all in that it is not akin to the feeling of fear, dread, or terror, while also implying a um, certain amount of love or affection. We feel reverence for a parent and for an upright magistrate, but we stand in awe of a tyrant. So when you understand, that, like I brought out as far as a parent, it's the same thing. When you're, a, when you're a child, when you were like five years old, elementary, middle school, you knew if you did bad at school, you, you had bad grades, you got in trouble at school, you came back home and you were in fear, okay? Now we know scripture says, be not bitter towards your wife. So understand your wife is a weaker vessel and understand how to operate as a husband. And when she does make a mistake or makes a misstep. Okay. But as far as a woman having reverence towards her husband and basically being, having that healthy fear, having that healthy respect for him, that's something that's required of her to do. And I'll say this. If you're a brother that has a fear of reverence and awe for your wife, that is out of order. If you are in your house and you can't do certain things, okay, 
that are not against the scriptures or you can't say certain things that you want to have done out of fear that your wife will get angry, upset at you, all right, will take things away from you, then you are not operating as a proper head. Because when we're in this thing, we know that there is no way that in like manner would Mashiach be afraid of the church. So hopefully this was edifying. And again, I want to give all glory and praises to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Grace and mercy be bound to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom.